Hello. Welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real-life American English. Today, we're going to learn to avoid some mistakes, so let's get started. First, this is not correct. But because today is 20 degrees Fahrenheit, the snow is sticking to the ground. I cannot say today is 20 degrees Fahrenheit. When I talk about temperature, I have to use the pronoun it. Today, it is 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Or I can make the contraction it's. Today, it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So today, it's cold. It's really cold. It's 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That's below freezing. Let's practice. Is it cold? Is it 20 degrees Fahrenheit? That's right. It's 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that below freezing? That's right. That's below freezing. This is also not correct. Therefore, it's very hard to tell what is the sidewalk versus what is the ground. We don't say it's hard to tell what is the sidewalk versus what is the ground. What is the sidewalk is a direct question. We can't use a direct question here. We use weather. It's hard to tell whether it's the ground or the sidewalk. So you see the snow on the ground, and it's hard to tell whether it's the sidewalk or it's the ground. Let's practice. Is it hard to tell whether it's the sidewalk or the ground? That's right. It's hard to tell whether it's the sidewalk or the ground. This is also not correct. Because when it snows, it may turn the road to ice. We don't say when it snows, it may turn the road to ice. We can change it and say the road may turn icy. After turn, we need an adjective. The road doesn't turn to ice. We cannot say it may turn the road to ice. But we can say the road or the roads may turn icy. Use the adjective icy. Let's practice. What do you think? Do you think the road may turn icy? That's right. The road may turn icy. This is also not correct. The car may skid off the road, and I don't like that happening. We don't say the car may skid off the road, and I don't like that happening. We say, I wouldn't like that to happen. We use to plus a simple verb, to happen. The car may skid off the road, and I wouldn't like that to happen. Let's practice. So, the car may skid off the road. Would you like that to happen? That's right. I wouldn't like that to happen either. This is also not correct. When it snows outside, it can be pretty annoying, especially when you drive, because when you get in the car, you'll be carrying all the snow and all the ice inside the car. We don't say, when you get in the car, you'll be carrying all the snow and all the ice inside the car. In this case, we don't say carry. We use a different verb. We say track. When you get in the car, you'll be tracking all the snow and all the ice in the car. Example, he's tracking mud in the house. So you don't want to track snow in your car. We don't use carry in this case. We use track. Let's practice. Is he tracking mud in the house? That's right. He's tracking mud in the house. This is also not correct. People put salt on the stairs or on the ground to prevent people from slipping and falling. Now I have this container full of salt and I'm going to put it on the ground. And you might be wondering, what type of salt do you use on the ground? Well, you can use table salt that's inside your house. We don't say salts. We don't put an S on the word salt. It's singular and it's not countable. Use salt. Never say salts. Always use it in a singular form. So they put salt on the ground to melt the ice. That's why they do it. Let's practice. Why do they put salt on the ground? That's right. They put salt on the ground to melt the ice. This is also not correct. What happens if you forgot to put salt on the ground? I cannot say what happens if you forgot to put salt on the ground. After if, I cannot use a past action because this is real. This is something real. We have to say, what happens if you forget? This is also not correct. You can tell how cold it is just through my breath. Look. <laughs> I cannot say you can tell how cold it is just through my breath. I cannot use the preposition through. I use the preposition from. You can tell how cold it is just from my breath. 
from looking at my breath, not through. You can also use by. You can tell how cold it is by looking at her breath. Or from. You can tell how cold it is from looking at her breath. But don't use through. Let's practice. Can you tell how cold it is by looking at her breath? That's right. You can tell how cold it is by looking at her breath. This is also not correct. This snow has not been touched, and to make one, you will lay down on the snow. We don't say on the snow. We say in the snow. You walk in the snow. You sit in the snow. You lay in the snow, but not on the snow. Example, he's walking in the snow. Or they're lying. They're lying in the snow. Let's practice. Is he walking in the snow? That's right, he's walking in the snow, not on the snow. Are they laying in the snow? That's right, they're laying in the snow. So keep watching to continue practicing and to learn to avoid more mistakes. This is not correct. And you can start designing. You can literally build your dream kitchen on this computer and visualize how it will look like. I cannot say visualize how it will look like. Why not? If you use how, you cannot use the word like together. In this way, you cannot say visualize how it will look like. So how do you say it correctly? Well, we have two options. One option is to change how to the question word what. Visualize what it will look like. Or I can use how and eliminate like. Visualize how it will look. But not visualize how it will look like. We cannot use how and like together in a sentence. So imagine your perfect house. Can you visualize how it will look? Me too. I can visualize how it will look. Can you visualize what it will look like? Me too. I can visualize what it will look like. So remember, don't use how with like together. Example, we can't say how is it like. We say what is it like. We cannot say how does it look like or how does it sound like. It's just how does it look or how does it sound. Or you can change to what and say what does it look like or what does it sound like. Just don't use how with like. Also, don't combine the way and how. You cannot say I like the way how it looks. Just say I like the way it looks. So keep watching to practice more so you can learn to avoid these common mistakes. This is not correct. Usamos above cuando no hay movimiento. Por ejemplo, I'm above the table. She's not above the table. Her feet are touching the table. So we cannot use above in this case. We use on. She's on the table. She's not above the table. We use above in different situations, not this one. Let's practice. Is she above the table or is she on the table? That's right, she's on the table. This is also not correct. Hola, soy Arianita. ¿Sabes cómo buscar trabajo en inglés? Acompáñame. Hi, are there any positions right now to work? Absolutely. You do not ask the question, are there any positions right now to work? Are there any positions to work? We do not ask the question like this. We say, are there any positions available right now? Again, are there any positions available right now? We don't use to work. We use available. And we put right now at the end of the question. Question, are there any positions available right now? And the answer is yes. There are some positions available right now. Let's practice. Are there any positions available right now? That's right, there are some positions available right now. Let's practice the question. Ask me the question. Yes, there are some positions available right now. Very good. This is also not correct. I cannot say let me know down below what was your favorite part of the video. If I make this one long question, I have to switch was and use a positive structure. It's correct to say, let me know down below what your favorite part of the video was. We have to put was after the subject. 
If you put was before the subject, then it's a question. But this is not a question. We have to use a positive structure. Let me know down below what your favorite part of the video was. If I ask a direct question and I start the question with what, then I can use the question structure. What was your favorite part of the video? That's a direct question and that is correct. So let me know in the comments below what the favorite part of this video was. This is not correct. Next, I'm going to tap the beverages menu. And as you can see, you can order a lot of beverages or soft drinks. I cannot say beverages menu. In this case, the word beverage is an adjective, so it has to be in a singular form. Beverage menu. This is a beverage menu. It's a menu of different drinks. Beverage is an adjective, so it has to be in a singular form. Example, I want to look at the beverage menu. What about you? Do you want to look at the beverage menu? Another example, dessert menu. We cannot put S on it and say desserts menu because it's an adjective. You have to use the singular form dessert. The dessert menu or a dessert menu. A dessert menu is one in general and the dessert menu is the specific one for that restaurant. So example, I can tell the waiter, I want to look at the dessert menu. Let's practice. Do you want to look at the dessert menu? That's right. I want to look at the dessert menu. Very good. This is also not correct. So let's go ahead and scroll down. They have Coke products, Sprite, Fanta. They have some iced root beer. Here at McDonald's, they have Coke products. They have Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite, Fanta, root beer. In America, we do not pronounce the word Fanta. It is pronounced Fanta. Fanta. Use the short A ah sound. Before the N, it changes a little bit. It becomes a little more nasal in your nose. Fa, fa, fana, fana. What about the T? Well, when you have NT between vowels, you don't really hear the T. Like 20 and center. And this word too. It's more common to hear fana than fanta. Both are correct, but usually we don't pronounce the T. Fana. And we never say fanta. Never. I don't like orange fana. I think it's too sweet. It has too much sugar. What about you? Do you like orange fanta? Very good. This is also not correct. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a line at the registers to order my food there. I cannot say I'm going to go ahead and make a line. We cannot use make a line in this case. We say I'm going to go stand in line or get in line or wait in line, but not make a line. When can we use make a line? When you have more than one person, for example, a teacher is talking to a group of children and the teacher says, okay, everybody, make a line. It takes many people to make a line. But if you're talking about yourself, I'm going to go stand in line. I'm going to go wait in line, or I'm going to go get in line, not make. Example, he's going to go get in line, not make a line, get in line. Let's practice. What is he going to do? Is he going to get in line? That's right. He's going to get in line. Also, we see that there's no the. You don't say get in the line, wait in the line, or stand in the line. There's no the. Keep watching until the end of this video to practice with the word line and how to use it correctly. This is also not correct. Now I'm going to order some food with the menu. We don't say, I'm going to order some food with the menu. We use a different preposition. We use the preposition from, from the menu. So it's correct to say, I'm going to order some food from the menu, not with the menu. It's not you and the menu together ordering food. You order food from a menu. In this case, from the menu. It's a specific menu at a specific place. She's going to order some food from the menu. Let's practice. Is she going to order some food from the menu? That's right. She's going to order some food from the menu, but not with the menu. This is also not correct. After finishing my meal, now I have some taste for dessert. So I'm going to order myself a frappe. We don't say I have some taste for dessert. It's possible to use taste 
in a countable way and say, I have a taste for dessert, but it's not common. And we cannot use some. We cannot say, I have some taste for dessert. It's only used as a countable noun. But again, it's not common. So what do you say? People say, I have a craving for dessert, or maybe I have room for dessert, but not some taste for dessert. Example, I have some room for dessert. Some space in my stomach. We say room. I have some room for dessert. Do you have any room for dessert? Very good. Or we can use craving. I have a craving for dessert. Do you have a craving for dessert? Very good. This is also not correct. And it's called drive through because you need a car and you drive through it in a lane. And in some Latin American countries, drive through is called automac. In other fast food restaurants, like the one next to me, Arby's, it's the same thing. It's called drive through I cannot say it's called drive through drive through is a countable noun, so I have to use an article. A, uh, a drive through it's correct to say it's called a drive through You can also use the article the, the drive through for a specific one. Example, I don't like to use the drive through at this restaurant. It takes too long. And it's called a drive through Let's practice. Do you like to use the drive through Very good. Let's practice. What is it called? Is it called a drive through That's right, it's called a drive through We have to use an article. This is also not correct. How do you call drive through in your country? First, remember, drive through is countable. So it's a drive through And how do you call? We cannot say how do you call. When asking a question like this, and you use the verb call, we cannot use how. We have to use what. What do you call? The correct question is, what do you call a drive through in your country? We have to use the question word what, and we have to use an article for drive through. A drive through. What do you call a drive through in your country? I cannot say how do you call drive through in your country. It's not right. So let me know in the comments, what do you call a drive through in your country? Put it in the comments. And keep watching for a complete explanation of why we say what do you call and not how do you call. And to practice more. Keep watching to practice more. This is not correct. And then after pouring that champagne glass, I would go next to my friend or family member and I would cheers them. It's not correct to say I would go next to my friend or family member and I would cheers them. Cheers is not a verb. It cannot be used as a verb. Cheers is what you say. You raise your glass and you say cheers. So what's the verb? You can say have a toast. Have a toast with somebody. You raise your glass, you say something, and you have a toast with someone. You cannot cheer somebody. So you can say, I would have a toast with them. The first part, I would go next to my friend or family member. I guess it's correct, but it sounds strange. I would say walk up to. I would walk up to my friend or family member, and I would have a toast with them. Let's practice. So, if it were New Year's, what would you do? Would you walk up to your friend or family member and have a toast with them? That's right. I would walk up to my friend or family member and I would have a toast with them. If it were New Year's Eve. This is also not correct. So I'm just going to buy this. This is a beautiful headband that will combine with my dress. I cannot say this is a beautiful headband that will combine with my dress. I cannot use the verb combine in this case. I can say go with. This is a beautiful headband that will go with my dress, not combine. You can also say, go well with. The word well is optional. So you can say, go with or go well with. And it means that they look good together. So you can say, this is a beautiful headband that will go with my dress. Or this is a beautiful headband that will go well with my dress. You can also use the verb match. Match my dress. When you use the verb match, there's no preposition with. You cannot say match with, only match. I can say, this is a beautiful headband that will match my dress. What does it mean? It means they're the same color. So use match if they're the same color. 
and use go with or go well with if they just look good together. Example, her blouse goes well with her skirt. They're not the same color, but they look good together. So I can say go with or go well with. Her blouse goes with her skirt. Or I can say her blouse goes well with her skirt. Let's practice. Does her blouse go with her skirt? That's right. Her blouse goes with her skirt. Does her blouse go well with her skirt? That's right. Her blouse goes well with her skirt. Now let's practice with match. Her shoes match her skirt. They're the same color, so I use the verb match. And remember, there's no preposition with, just the verb match. Her shoes match her skirt. What if I start with skirt? And I say her skirt. Then I have to change the verb and say matches, because skirt is singular. Her skirt matches her shoes. They're the same color. Let's practice. Do her shoes match her skirt? That's right. Her shoes match her skirt. Does her skirt match her shoes? That's right. Her skirt matches her shoes. So remember, when you talk about clothes, you can say go with, you can say go well with, and you can say match. But don't say combine. We don't say that in English. This is also not correct. I would say cheers. I would tap the glass next to their glass. We cannot say I would tap my glass next to their glass. Next to is used to express position. The glass is next to the other glass. My glass is next to their glass. Position. But if I use the verb tap, I have to use a different preposition. We use the preposition against. I would tap my glass against their glass. Not next to. Against. So when you have a toast, you tap your glass against their glass. And you say cheers. Let's practice. What do you do when you have a toast? Do you tap your glass against their glass and say cheers? That's right. You tap your glass against their glass and you say cheers. That's how you have a toast. This is also not correct. And this is just a joyful expression to say during the new year. Cheers. It's just a joyful expression to say during the new year. During the new year? If I say during the new year, I'm talking about the whole year. During the year. During the new year. But we don't say cheers during the new year. We say it on New Year's Eve, on that one night. So I can say it's just a joyful expression to say on New Year's Eve. Or I can say it's just a joyful expression to ring in the new year. We have that expression too, to ring in the new year. That's what you do at midnight. I say cheers, and I say Happy New Year on New Year's Eve. I say Happy New Year to ring in the new year, not during the new year. Let's practice. What do you say on New Year's Eve? Very good. What do you say to ring in the new year? Very good. This is also not correct. Before ending this video, I am going to teach you all, what is a New Year's resolution? You cannot say, I'm going to teach you what is a New Year's resolution. What is a New Year's resolution is a direct question. But if you say, I'm going to teach you, we have to change the structure. We have to use a positive structure. So it's correct to say, I'm going to teach you what a New Year's resolution is. I put is after. Or if I ask the question, do you know? I have to use a positive structure. Do you know what a New Year's resolution is? And you can answer positive and say, yes, I know what a New Year's resolution is with a positive structure. Or if you say, no, I don't know what a New Year's resolution is. Again, use a positive structure not a question structure. If I say what is, that's a question structure for a direct question. But these are not direct questions. Let's practice. Do you know what a New Year's resolution is? Very good. This is also not correct. A New Year's resolution is the promise we make for ourselves for the new year. I cannot say a New Year's resolution is a promise we make for ourselves on New Year's. If I talk about promise and I use promise as a noun, we don't use the preposition for. We use a different preposition. 
we use the preposition to. So it's correct to say a New Year's resolution is a promise we make to ourselves on New Year's. You make a promise to somebody, not for somebody. Example, when I make a promise to somebody, I try to keep it. Let's practice. When you make a promise to somebody, do you keep it? Do you try to keep it? That's right. When I make a promise to somebody, I keep it or I try to keep it. So remember, you make a promise to somebody, not for somebody. What about the verb promise? When we use the verb promise, there's no preposition. Example, I promise you that I will do it. There's no preposition with the verb. But the noun, if you make a promise, use the preposition to. You make a promise to somebody. This is also not correct. So if you're working a lot and you're always busy, you can place and set some time to spend time with your family. You can place and set some time to spend time with your family is not correct. First, the verb place and set, we cannot use for time. You don't place some time. You cannot set some time. We have a phrasal verb. The phrasal verb is set aside. Set aside. You hear the T change to a fast D. Set a, set a, set aside. You set aside some time. You don't place time. You don't set time. You set aside some time. And it's a separable phrasal verb. So I can say, you set aside some time or you set some time aside. Whichever is easier. They're both correct. So let's change it. You can set aside some time to spend time with your family. There's a little problem here. It sounds redundant. Redundant. What is redundant? It means to do or say something more than what is necessary. And we see the word time twice, two times. It sounds redundant. So let's eliminate the word time, the second one, and say, you can set aside some time to spend with your family. That's the best way to say it. So that's a good New Year's resolution. In the new year, I'm going to set aside some time to spend with my family. Let's practice. What about you? Are you going to set aside some time to spend with your family? Very good. This is not correct. And another thing you may need besides sunscreen are sunglasses. I cannot say another thing you may need besides sunscreen are sunglasses. We cannot use are in this case. I know what you're thinking. Sunglasses. It's plural. You should use are. But the verb does not depend on the object. It depends on the subject. So if I say another thing you may need, thing is the subject. And it's singular. So we have to use the verb is. So it's correct to say another thing you may need besides sunscreen is sunglasses. We have to use is in a sentence because the subject is singular. So Another thing you might need is sunglasses. The idea? You might need a lot of things. And another thing you might need is sunglasses. Let's practice. What's another thing you might need? That's right. Another thing you might need is sunglasses. This is also not correct. And if you're a man, you will use these. These are swimming trunks. I cannot say if you are a man, you will use these. These are swimming trunks. We don't use the verb use when we talk about clothes. We use a different verb. We use wear. So it's correct to say if you're a man, you will wear these. These are swimming trunks. So remember, we don't use our clothes. We wear our clothes. I cannot say I'm using the sweater. I'm wearing the sweater. So I'm wearing a sweater. What are you wearing? Very good. Also, don't say this. We have some staplers you can use for wood. These are way different from the ones in your school. These will be more tactable to the wood panels. She said it's tactable. But what is tactable? I cannot find this word in any dictionary. I don't know what it means. I don't know what it is. So don't use the word tactable. I'm not sure if it exists. This is also not correct. 
this. So as you can see, we have our wrench set that you can use to wrench in things. These are wrenches, but I cannot wrench in anything. There's no phrasal verb wrench in. There's a verb wrench, but it means something different. If I'm talking about these wrenches, use the verb turn. You turn bolts and you turn nuts with wrenches. Or you can use the verb tighten. You tighten bolts. You tighten nuts with a wrench. Or I can use the verb loosen to make it loose. You can loosen a bolt or you can loosen a nut with a wrench. But there's no phrasal verb wrench in. It doesn't exist. This is also not correct. So this is a hammer that you hammer nails into pieces of wood or other things. And this is a mallet. So similar use, similar thing to a hammer, but it's called differently. Hammer, mallet. I cannot say it's called differently. I cannot use the adverb differently with the verb call in this case when you're giving the name of something. So if you have something with two different names, we say it's called something different or it's called something else. Don't say it's called differently. It's not correct. Example, these are called reading glasses and these are called something else. These are called something different. These are called sunglasses. Let's practice. Are these called something else? Are these called something different? That's right. These are called something else. These are called something different. I cannot say these are called differently. This is also not correct. This is a rug and it's really soft and it's different from a carpet because it's just only one big rectangle. Whereas a carpet will take over your whole entire floor of your house. I cannot say the carpet will take over your whole entire floor. We don't use the phrasal verb take over. We use the verb cover. The carpet will cover your whole entire floor. And you don't have to say whole entire. They mean the same thing. So the carpet will cover your whole floor. That's how it's different from a rug. A rug will not cover your whole floor. So let's practice. Will the carpet cover your whole floor? That's right. The carpet will cover your whole floor. What about the rug? Will the rug cover your whole floor? That's right. The rug will not cover your whole floor. So what is take over? What is the phrasal verb take over? It means to take control. Usually governments and countries, they take over. Or maybe companies. Someone can take over a company. It means to take control. Take total control. Take over. Carpets don't do that. Example, Elon Musk took over Twitter. I don't know why, but he did. Elon Musk took over Twitter. He took control of the company. He bought it. Let's practice. Did Elon Musk take over Twitter? That's right. Elon Musk took over Twitter. And he changed the name. This is not correct. But first, you need to know the difference between a city and a downtown. I cannot say the difference between a city and a downtown. Why not? Because downtown is not countable. I cannot say a downtown. One downtown or two downtowns. It's not a countable word. You can say a downtown area. So you can say the difference between a city and a downtown area. But not a downtown. Let's talk about downtown. It's an interesting word because it has different variations. For example, I can say the restaurant is downtown with no preposition. Or I can say the restaurant is in downtown. Both are correct. And if you use a verb with direction and movement like go, normally we say go to. But you don't have to. You can just say go downtown. We're going downtown to go shopping. And if you talk about the name of the city, you put it before the name of the city. For example, downtown Dallas. Downtown Miami. We're going to downtown Miami. In that case, we use to. But if you just say downtown, you don't need to. We're going downtown. But never a downtown. Let's practice. Is this a downtown area? That's right. This is a downtown area. In this case, we can say a uh, because you have one area. Where is the restaurant? Is the restaurant downtown? 
That's right. The restaurant is downtown. Where are they going? Are they going downtown? That's right. They're going downtown. Is this downtown Miami or downtown Dallas? That's right. This is downtown Dallas. This is also not correct. What is a cruise? A cruise is a large ship and you will take a voyage or a journey on the sea. I cannot say a cruise is a large ship. A cruise is not a large ship. A cruise is a ride. When you ride on a ship, that's a cruise. So you can use the verb take. We're going to take a cruise. Or you can use the phrasal verb go on. We're going to go on a cruise. It's the trip. It's not the ship. So what do you call the ship? The ship is called a cruise ship. Let's practice. Is this a cruise ship? That's right. This is a cruise ship. Are they going to take a cruise? That's right. They're going to take a cruise. Or I can use go on. Are they going to go on a cruise? That's right. They're going to go on a cruise. This is also not correct. How do you call this appliance that would go inside your kitchen? Now, how do you call this thing where you listen to music? I cannot say, how do you call this appliance or how do you call this thing? In this situation, when we use the verb call, we cannot start the question with how. We have to start the question with what. So it's correct to say, what do you call this appliance? Or, what do you call this thing? We cannot say, how do you call in this situation. You can also use passive voice and say, what is it called? What is this thing called? And you answer, it's called an appliance. Or it's called a stove. Use passive voice for the answer. So, example, what do you call this appliance? And I answer, it's called a stove. Let's practice. What do you call this appliance? That's right, it's called a stove. So keep watching until the end of this video to practice more with the difference between how do you call and what do you call, and how to say it correctly. This is also not correct. So this one right here is around $700, and it has buttons right here where you can control the heat. I cannot say it has buttons right here where you can control the heat. The problem is, they're not buttons. You don't push them. You push buttons. These are knobs. If you turn them, they're not buttons. You turn knobs. You turn the knob to control the heat. So it's correct to say, it has knobs right here where you can control the heat. Because you turn them, we have to call them knobs. They're not buttons. You push buttons and you turn knobs. We see the word knob has a K, and the K is silent. Don't pronounce the K. Start with the N sound. Knob. One knob, two knobs. The stove has knobs, and you turn the knobs to control the heat. Let's practice. Does the stove have knobs? That's right. The stove has knobs. Do you turn the knobs to control the heat? That's right. You turn the knobs to control the heat. This is also not correct. And if you would see that picture, it would look like you were right next to the thing you were taking a picture of. I cannot say if you would see that picture, it would look like you were right next to the thing you were taking a picture of. That's a long sentence. But that's not really the problem. The problem is would. If you would see that picture, it would look like you were right next to the thing you were taking a picture of. After if in the sentence, I cannot say would. This structure is called second conditional, and after if, we have to use a past action. We cannot use would after if in this sentence. We have to say if you saw. If you saw this picture, we have to use saw, the past of see. If you saw that picture, it would look like you were right next to the thing you were taking a picture of. Because it's an imaginary situation, it's not real, we use past after if to express the action that is not real. If you saw that picture. I cannot say if you would see that picture. 
Example, I cannot say if I would have a lot of money, I would buy a big house. Another imaginary situation. After if we use the past verb, it's correct to say if I had. If I had a lot of money, I would buy a big house. Let's practice. If you had a lot of money, would you buy a big house or a small house? That's right. If I had a lot of money, I would buy a big house. For example, if I were a millionaire, I would buy a big house. We use the past, were. Because it's not real, we have to use were for everybody. If I were, if he were, if she were, we're not supposed to use was. But if you make a mistake and you use was in the structure, it's okay. A lot of Americans do this too. So it's kind of acceptable now. But the rule says we're supposed to use were. It sounds better. If I were a millionaire, I would buy a big house. What about you? If you were a millionaire, would you buy a big house or a small house? Me too. If I were a millionaire, I would buy a big house. This is also not correct. If you buy something, you will go to the checkout counter and check out your items. I cannot say you will go to the checkout counter and check out your items. It's correct to use checkout as an adjective and say checkout counter. That's what it's called. It's called a checkout counter or the, the checkout counter. But I cannot say check out your items. We cannot use an object with this phrasal verb. You go to the checkout counter and you check out. You cannot use the object. You cannot say your items. You just say, you go to the checkout counter and you check out. You can ask the person at the store, can I check out here? Sure, you can check out here. But you cannot say, can I check out my items here? There's no object with this phrasal verb. If you use an object, you have to say buy or pay for. I need to pay for my items. I need to buy my items or I just need to check out. Because if you say, I need to check out my items, then it makes you think of another phrasal verb, check out, which means to look at something. Example, check out my new glasses. Check out. It means to look at something, if you have an object. If I buy a new car, I can say, hey, come and check out my new car. That's a different idea. And that's why when you say check out to mean buy your items or pay for your items, do not use an object. Just say, I need to check out. Where can I check out? But if you buy a new car and you want your friends to look at your new car, you say, come outside and check out my new car. That's different. That's when we use check out plus an object to look at something. So examples, you check out at the checkout counter, but you don't check out your items. You just check out. Again, you can check out at the checkout counter. Let's practice. Can you check out at the checkout counter? That's right, you can check out at the checkout counter. Example with check out plus an object, meaning to look at, I just bought a new car. Do you want to check out my new car? And you say, sure, I'd love to check out your new car. Let's practice. I just bought a new car. Do you want to go check out my new car? Very good. So remember, keep watching to practice more with the difference between how do you call and what do you call? Remember, we don't say how do you call. Keep watching to practice more. First, this is not correct. Mmm, this slushy and this popcorn is delicious. Talking about popcorn, how do you guys call popcorn in your country? It's not correct to say, how do you guys call popcorn? And this is also not correct. Oh yeah, they can even proofread your assay. How's the app called? I wanna check it out. Hi, native. Oh, wow. It's not correct to say, how's the app called? And here's another teaching video with the title, Here's How We Call Each Finger. But it's not correct to say, here's how we call each finger. As you can see, this is a very common mistake made by non-native speakers. So how do we say it correctly? Well, if you want to know the name of something, it's not correct to say, how do you call it? We have to use the question word, what? We have to say, what do you call it? We cannot use the question word how in this case. What do you call that? What do you call that? What do you call it? Then? Yeah? What do you call it? That hat, what do you call it? What do you call it? When the assassins accuse the assassin. 
I'm trying to, what do you call it? What do you call it, a fixation, psychosis? Have you thought of that? What do you call that, a goose? She gave it all up to live with a bunch of women and uh, what do you call it, a, 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 a sorority. What do you call it, a success? The fact that you're here and doing as well as you're doing gives me, what do you call it, a motivation, huh, to stay alive? So let's look at the question and the answer. The question is, what do you call it? Or I can use passive voice and say, what is it called? I can also make the contraction, what's, and say, what's it called? Oh, this one's good. What's it called again? What's it called again? What is it called? They even got a whole, um, what is it called? So that marbles thing that you were so very smart about, what is it called again? What is it called? The cross-country classic? Uh, Rita, please continue your restoration using Norman's, uh, what is it called again? What's it called again? Shake Shack? When you answer this question, we have to answer with passive voice. It's called. Exactly. It's called first jumping. It's delicious. It's called a Malaga cooler. It's called a gravity drive. It's called the knockout mechanism. It's called the masses. It's called a sand walk. Yes, they do, and horses, and pigs, and goats, and sheep. And it's called animal husbandry. It's called a rock blanket. Or if I have something in my hand, I say this. What do you call this? Or I can use passive voice and say, what is this called? And the answer, it's called a plush toy. This is called a plush toy. Let's practice. What do you call this? That's right. This is called a plush toy. Now let's practice the question. Ask me the question. Very good. This is called a plush toy. What if you have two? For example, scissors. Question. What do you call these? These are called scissors. Or I can ask the question. What are these called? Or what are they called? They are called scissors. Let's practice. What are these called? That's right, these are called scissors. Now, ask me the question. They're called scissors. Very good. So when can we use the question word how? We can use how with questions like, how do you pronounce? How do you say? And how do you spell? With these verbs, we use the question word how. How do you, how do you pronounce that one? How do you pronounce your name? How do you pronounce this? Uh, and we were curious. Uh... How do you pronounce it? Now, how do you pronounce your name? Example, how do you pronounce your last name? I answer, it's pronounced Liddell. Let's practice. How do you pronounce your last name? Very good. And with the question, how do you spell your last name? I answer, it's spelled L-I-D-D-E-L-L. -L. Hey, Anne, how do you spell freckles? How do you spell zucchini? So how do you spell all these words anyway? How do you spell buter, by the way? Peace. How do you spell that? Okay, and how do you spell that? T-R-O-Y. Hey, Josie, how do you spell ugly? How do you spell that? Yes. How do you spell that? Let's practice. How do you spell your last name? Very good. Let's practice with how do you say. I'm not so young anymore, and um, how do you say a little uh, incontinent? How do you say no? Oh my gosh. I know. How do you say that in Espanol? How do you say that in French? How do you say that you're a loving person with this on my face, you yeah. know? How do you say this? How do you say this in your native language? Very good. Let's also look at the difference between a direct question and an indirect question. If I say, what do you call it? That's a direct question. But if I say, do you know? I have to change the structure. Do you know what it's called? I cannot say, do you know what is it called? I cannot use a question structure. I have to use a positive structure after do you know. Do you know what it's called? I know what it's called. I don't know what it's called. You know what it's called? What? New tweeter ends. Oh, I know what it's called. But you can't do this. I know what it's called. Let's practice. Do you know what it's called? That's right. I know what it's called. Ask me the question. Yes, I know what it's called. It's called a plush toy. Very good. 
Now let's practice the negative answer. Do you know what it's called? I don't know what it's called. Do you know what it's called? That's right. I don't know what it's called either. Very good. Keep watching to learn to avoid another common mistake with the verb call. Today we're talking about an important mistake to avoid using the verb call. I can say, what do they call him? They call him a troublemaker. But I cannot say, how do they call him? When using call, you make the question with what. What do they call him? And also, when you use call, don't use like. They call him like that. No like when you use the verb call. So, I say, why do they call him that? Not, why do they call him like that? Why do they call him that? They call him that because he causes problems. They call him a troublemaker because he causes problems. So again, with the verb call, do not use like. You cannot say, they call him like that. You say, they call him that. Question, why do they call him that? They call him that because he causes problems. He makes trouble. That's why they call him that. Let's practice. What do they call him? That's right, they call him a troublemaker. Why do they call him that? That's right, they call him that because he causes problems. He makes trouble. That's why they call him that. So remember, when using call, use the question word what, never how, and don't put the action call with like. You cannot use the two words together, call and like. You can say speak like that and talk like that, but you cannot say call him like that. It's call him that. A common mistake I've heard from my students is this, the way how I like it. Example, they cook the food the way how I like it is not correct. We cannot put the way and how together. We have to eliminate one. So you can say they cook the food the way I like it, or you can say they cook the food how I like it. But you cannot say they cook the food the way how I like it together. You cannot use the way and how together because they mean basically the same thing. For emphasis, you can use exactly or just. Example, they cook it just the way I like it. Let's practice. Do they cook the food just the way you like it? That's right, they cook it just the way I like it. Example, she's a good cook, so I can say, I like the way she cooks. Or I can say, I like how she cooks. But I cannot say, I like the way how she cooks. I cannot use the way and how together. I have to eliminate one. So I say, I like the way she cooks. Let's practice. Do you like the way she cooks? Very good. I like the way she cooks too. So remember, you cannot say the way how. You cannot say the way how I like it. You cannot use the way and how together. You have to eliminate one and use just one. The way or how. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to become a member, click the join button. And we'll see you next time.